Hi, I'm Cantalang Klein and welcome to The Secret Art of Business. And today I am so excited to have Darcy Congrove, mostly just to see you again, because we see each other constantly um, at networking events and, you know, why not this too, you know? <laughs> Um, which is kind of great because when you're at events and, you know, if you can at least find one person that you know, which I'm, that's a, a great tip for everybody out there, you know, it, you can turn it into a really great event. So it's always good to see your friendly face in the crowd at all the events. But thank you for doing this. I know you're a very busy person. Um, I'm going to have you talk a little bit about GBQ um, just to kind of give them some credit here for you being here and um, tell us everything that you guys do there and you know who your ideal customer is. Great. Well, thanks for having me. I am a managing director at GBQ Partners, and we are a full-service public accounting firm. We were founded in Columbus, Ohio, 70 years ago, so celebrating our anniversary. And uh, my background was tax. I worked in a couple other firms before I came to GBQ. Um, my big celebration in 2023 is that this I am no longer doing tax returns, so I'm just doing uh, leadership and administration and uh, administrivia, some of my partners say. Um, <laughs> But uh, really are excited um, about where GBQ is right now in that 70th year. We're expanding uh, globally. Uh, so oh, the, wow. need for talent, the need for talent has taken us to the Manila, Manila Philippines and to uh, Bangalore, India uh, as a starting point. And we are also looking at lots of new and different uh, consulting practices that might fit within Kind of this the chain of client needs that we serve so we're adding to our audit and tax and all those traditional things that you think about accounting firms doing and are about uh, 300 people strong at this point so it's that it's become a big business yeah so your, your ideal client is um is it like you know just the regular tax person you know somebody just wanting to get their taxes done or are you talking business a mid-sized business what's kind of your sweet spot yeah, so we, for all of our history, we have worked primarily with closely held businesses and their owners. Nice. So there are some exceptions to that. Uh, we do some kind of specialty consulting work at the very high end of big companies here in town. Um, we also serve a lot of high net worth individuals. But the, the really sweet spot for us is, you know, a multi-generational family business that's got lots of complexity and lots of entities and lots of people involved. And trying to look at the whole picture of that and give them some advice on how to make that business as good as it can be and how to pay as little tax as possible. And that is the key. That is the key. Don't leave the money on the table for sure. All right. So you are, you know, a, a mega leader here in Columbus and um, <laughs> that's, that's, and I, I, again, everywhere, that's, that's what we do. But uh, I want to backtrack a little bit and talk about what did you do as a kid and particularly for entertainment or fun or creativity? I'm just going to get a little background on, on little Darcy. Yeah, little little Darcy um, basically had her own little world. So I had um, I have a brother who's almost four years younger than me, he had a completely different personality. He was a person who was like climbing trees and jumping off rocks and doing all that stuff constantly. And I was generally like planning and organizing uh, with my <laughs> dolls and my teddy bears that we were, you know, hosting parties. We were playing bingo. Literally, I would move the bingo cards for all of them. I would call it and then move all of their oh. cards. <laughs> Um, I, I, I had, we had a playroom and I basically, I owned it and I moved everything around and rearranged it every day. And we were in a whole different system, right? We were playing house or we were playing school or we were doing something. And I, I did have a couple little neighborhood friends that would play along, but, um, I mostly liked the setup and the organizing as opposed to the actual executing. <laughs> That's actually really fun. That's really fun, especially since I know what you, you do now. Um, that all is all making a lot of sense. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And then and then I got involved in 4-H when I was in third grade. Oh, wow. Um, and what, what did that involve? Well, so I lived in a tiny town. I grew up in Baltimore, Ohio. that had two stoplights. And everybody in Baltimore, Ohio, or it seemed to me that everybody was in 4-H because they had animals, right? They showed their cows and their sheep and so forth at the fair. And the Liberty Union School District where I grew up still closes for a, for a fair week in the fall so that everybody can take their animals to the fair. Oh, that's fantastic. So we didn't have animals. Uh, so my thing was to join 4-H and be in this like sewing and cooking kind of club. So I learned how to sew my own clothes and how to cook um, starting in third grade. I, I, I was pretty, that. and I was pretty good at it. Oh, I bet you <laughs> were. 
because it fit right in with this like structured planning thing. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, sewing especially needs to be kind of precise too, because otherwise you have a crooked outfit. <laughs> that's real. That's actually really, really cool. And and I have a, a lot of respect for people that can actually sew things that work. Do you still sew now? I mean, do you, have you, do you still make your own clothes or? No. No, no, I did early in my career. I did. I actually made my own suits because um, I couldn't afford clothes. Wow. <laughs> I I don't do that anymore. I, I use this like, machine just to fix stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Point. And that's why I kind of did some self-teaching for sewing because the clothes never fits right. So you always have to like shorten yeah. the legs or something. Exactly. <laughs> so I know basics and that's about it. But I love that you did that. That is so cool. All right. So from 4-H to where you are now, um, what was your career path? Um, so I went, so I went to Miami, uh, chose to study accounting because I had a cousin and I recently talked about this in a business first interview and, and I've gotten a lot of feedback from my cousins all over the country. So my dad's from a huge family and I have literally dozens of cousins, most of whom I do not see or talk to very often. Um, but one of them was an accountant. He was about 10 years older than me. And he came to visit us in Ohio. He's from Texas and told me that being an accountant was really fun and that you make a lot of money. And so that seemed like it was old, cool, right? <laughs> now, what he didn't tell me, you know, was that most people don't picture accountants as being really fun, right? I missed that memo. <laughs> but <laughs> like most of the people I think that we interview in our business, even today coming from campus, accounting students generally self-identify in the initial accounting classes because it kind of clicks for them and it doesn't for everybody else. And so you very quickly get within the first, you know, couple months of accounting class, people who love it and people who hate it. And the people who love it are the ones that are destined to be accountants. So, um, so I've been in public accounting, uh, working in firms for my entire career, which is now 31 years. So it must've clicked. It clicked. Yeah. What did you like about it? You know, initially I liked the, I liked the structure. Yeah. And then what I found. Two sides I, balanced. Yes. <laughs> so I did a very traditional thing and, and your workplace um, behaviors are very different today than they were 31 years ago. So, you know, I started in the era where you had to, you were literally required to wear black, blue or gray suits that were skirts. And I wasn't allowed to answer my phone for the first year because they said I wasn't qualified to talk for anything to talk for the firm. Oh so my goodness. I had a phone, but I could only use it outgoing. Um, <laughs> I was also reprimanded on my first day. I was wearing an awesome new suit, you know, in the 90, early 90s. That was kind of a scotch, you know, black plaid kind of thing. Oh, yeah. And uh, gold buttons, had gold earrings that match. I thought it was one of those days, oh, like the first day. I looked in the mirror and I was like, yes, I got it. And the initial conversation I had with the office manager who welcomed me was, you cannot wear that here. That is too much for too accounting. <laughs> too much. You know, and now today, uh, post pandemic, you know, there is no such thing as you must wear anything. You can do whatever you want to do and you can that do is and People have tattoos and piercings and all kinds of things that probably would have given that woman a heart. Oh my attack. gosh. Yeah. And maybe so it's, it's, it's involved. Involved. after the pandemic too, you know, it's like, oh, we well, now exactly. you have a short shirt on and I did not know that. <laughs> exactly. So it's evolved significantly. I think the piece of the job in my second job, which was working for a small firm, um, I had the opportunity to do a lot of things other than taxes. So I, my boss at the time was really involved in the chamber. And Catherine, you and I have both been involved in the chamber, so we yes. know what that looks like. He was part of the small business council at the chamber, and there were a lot of events. And he drug me to all those events with him because so he was teaching me how to network. Mm -hmm. And if I look back on kind of the pivotal moments of my career, that's one of them because he didn't give me an option to say, no, I don't want to do it or I'm not comfortable. He was just like, let's go. So my famous story is that I was the first one I went to by myself, a chamber event. Um, for whatever reason, they had elbow height tables, right? It was kind of a drinks and mixer oh, thing. Sure, sure. And they had candles on the tables. And I was holding my drink and my little cocktail napkin and I caught my napkin on fire. And I had to stomp it out on the floor of the chamber. Fortunately, it was not a carpet floor. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> and then I had to go back to, uh, then I had to get it together, right? And yeah, yeah. what I was doing. And so the next day, my boss says, you know, how did the event go? And I said, well, other than the fire, you know, it was pretty good. <laughs> and so I tell him the story and he's like, well, he goes, the good news is it'll probably never get worse than that. So keep going. I love it. And that was true. That was right? great that was advice. True. Yeah. yeah. That is really, really great so advice. So eventually, you know, kind of evolved to a place um, where I was doing more kind of management, HR, kind of networking, practice development things than I was doing, uh, or I was doing it better on that side than mm -hmm. I was doing the other. So then my firm, 10 of us came to GBQ at the same time. Wow. And my new boss a couple months in said, hey, let's talk. Your accounting skills aren't very good for what your title is. <laughs> And so, you know, I was like, oh, I'm going to get fired. Um, and he's like, but I noticed you have some other skills that your peers here don't have. So why don't we figure out how you can do some of those things to get some visibility within the firm? And then you work harder on the accounting stuff and catch up, which also, you know, second kind of big pivotal moment, I would say That's in my great. career, because he, did, he could have just fired me, right? Or demoted me or something else. And he said, no, I see something else in you. And ultimately, you know, the firm at that point was about 45 years old, um, had been small for a long time. We were starting to grow and we needed to build better systems and processes. And that takes me right back to that playroom where I was always organizing. Yes. Right. And so that has become kind of the piece that has led to the job that I have today. Oh, that's fantastic. That is a fantastic story um, and makes perfect sense. And the next thing that's going to make perfect sense is what you're doing for to be creative today. Um, because I do believe that, you know, in order to be innovative and to, you know, grow your business, which is you're definitely a part of, you have to do some creative problem solving, out of the box thinking, and you are staying very fine tuned with that creative side. So why don't you tell everybody what you're up to now? Yeah, so I've got I have a couple things. So um, somewhere along the way in the 4-H journey, they decided that we could actually study subjects that were not healthy. Right. So like we had we had been cooking healthy food and they added pie making and cake decorating to the 4-H oh, curriculum. Was a thing. So that was added, which was, which was well, it was, wasn't the thing. I mean, this is a long time ago, uh, <laughs> but but it was a big controversy because, you know, cake and pie were not healthy. And so should we teach people how to make them or not? Well, fortunately, they did. So I was super engaged in the cake decorating piece of it. And I actually through high school and college made cakes for people and sold them like wedding cakes and stuff, um, realized as I started to study accounting and I costed out my time that I was making, you know, like 30 cents an hour <laughs> making cakes. So um, not, it's, it's not an easy way to, uh, to make a living, but I have done that for a long time. And I actually worked for a catering company during college um, where they moved me to the baking area. And I, my claim to fame was I got to make the chef who ran the kitchen. I got to make her wedding cake. So Oh, that, that cool. is yeah. awesome. Oh, that yeah. is so awesome. today, today I'm still making some cakes. Um, but more, I like, I like big parties. I like theme parties. I like planning things. And fortunately I live in German village where life is a party, you know, kind of <laughs> every month. <laughs> so the big thing that we're planning right now is a house and garden tour, which is 63 yes. years old. And I've been involved in that committee for about 15 years. And this will be my 16th, um, dinner that I'm hosting the night before. So the event is public tour on Sunday, but private kind of fundraiser event on Saturday night. And we ask people to host theme dinners in their homes. Yeah. And I'm actually glad you brought that up because that is an, one, an amazing event. Um, and if, you know, you've not experienced that, you know, there's lower tiers that you can kind of um, sign up for where you, it's just a tour and then you can maybe work your way up to the pre-show, the pre-tours and the dinners and things like that. But it is quite a spectacular event, and I, I love that it's been going on for so long. Now, have you been in the German Village Society since you've lived there, or did you kind of join later? So I've been actively involved for about 15 years. I've lived in the village for 30. Okay. So I was kind of episodically involved when I was younger, but that was in those days when I was like, you know, working nonstop, so... Right, right. I got assigned. I got assigned a certain part of the uh, Huntington Garden in Schiller Park to weed. They split it. They split it up by people, right? And you oh, I didn't know there was up. like you know yes. this committee that weeds the park. Deadhead, the deadheaders. 
<laughs> still, still active today. That is so and, great. Well, it explains yeah, why the park always looks amazing. It is really, really it does. Amazing park. And it's, yeah. it's a beautiful part of Columbus as well with a lot of history. And I, I love that there are so many caretakers there that live there that just make it better um, and want to really keep it looking partially the way it is, but, you know, still a lot of updates to it too, but it's still just incredibly beautiful space. Um, and yeah. so for, for that, you know, for your, all you, you have, do you have like a, a tea party too, or is that incorporated with? I had, I had 10 years of a, a tea party fundraiser also to benefit the German Village Society. Yeah. Uh, and and I, we, we raised money for a historic signage program. And that involves cakes and hats and cakes and hats and beans. lots of champagne. <laughs> So it's just, again, a graduation from the teddy bear party that you used to have. Exactly. And now there's actually people that can move their own bingo pieces. <laughs> exactly. That is so Yeah. Cool. No, I'm hosting something in May for the uh, New Directions Career Center. Um, oh, yes. Um, yes. That'll, that'll be fun. That's a um, great organization doing great things to help women who are in traumatic experiences yes. and, and really difficult times, helping them get job skills and coaching skills and all kinds of things. So hoping for a sunny day in the garden. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And again, that is also, I've had a little bit of involvement with that. It's a great, great organization because, you know, it's, it's sometimes a person just needs a chance or to be seen and, and that little bit of help can make such a big difference. And, you know, also so easy to do too, you know, so, you know, sometimes uh, people get afraid that these tasks are so big to help people, but it's like, you know what, if, if it's just even a little something, it's encouraging words, it's, you know, just a little bit of your time um, makes a really huge difference. And it's a, it's a nice gateway to get into volunteer work and things like that just by, it's like, well, I can't write a big check. Well, you know, you don't have to. Here's how you can start. And, and that's what makes it really Absolutely. kind of cool and, and fun and easy and so freaking rewarding. And you can also tap into all those good feelings that you don't may not normally get to on the job as well. So <laughs> it's a nice little side hustle you can have as well. Well, yeah, you know, I, I skipped a whole chapter, uh, oh. which was the 15 years that my husband and I ran a bed and breakfast in the house next door to us. Oh, my um, gosh. Which, was, which ended uh, with COVID. You know, I, I wondered about that because I remember you guys did yeah. that, but I didn't realize you ended it with COVID. Yeah. So I did all the baking. So I, I had been baking for that 15 is. years to feed people breakfast every morning. Um, and, awesome. you know, we had to close because of COVID. And then we realized after we closed that it had kind of run its course and that we were happy to be free of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but we still have the yes. house. Yeah, we still have the house and we have, so as a result, because the house is next door to ours, we have a double lot. So we have plenty of room for parties, Perfect. which is great. Perfect. Yeah. I forgot about the bread and breakfast, but yeah, that just was just like a, this is constant thing that was going while you had your day job. So that yeah. is really amazing. You were a well-balanced person and incredibly busy. <laughs> Well, I got to the point where I was doing speed baking and I was like keeping track of like how fast could I make how many things, um, which my husband thought was ridiculous. But I was like, you know, after 15 years of making banana bread in the same recipe, like you really got to do something to make it more interesting. Exactly. Exactly. I, I like it. It turns into like um, like the, the the indie races or something, you know, where how fast can I change these tires? How fast can I get the exactly. banana bread out of the oven? Time me. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, so awesome. Um, Darcy, uh, that, that is, I mean, that is just everything. I, I loved hearing about all of that and I really appreciate your time and, uh, you know, to do this and I know I'll see you soon. So I, I can easily sign yes. off from here and just say, you know, see you, see you at the next thing. Um, but yes. I really want to, be, we have become friends, I think, through <laughs> yeah. uh, seeing each other at things. Which exactly. Exactly. And, um, I guess, you know, one of the parting things we can say too, is just, you know, just if you're, you know, nervous at networking, you know, it's, it's, it's just think of it as a conversation with somebody. It, it doesn't have to be, I got to go and sell, which I think automatically people kind of get triggered with, you know, but it's like, no, just go make some friends. And if they like you, they'll work with you. That's at least how my approach is. And absolutely. Um, and it, it ask gets, questions and make them talk. Yes. Yes. That's a, that's a great tip too, but thank you so much. So enjoy the rest thank of your you. day. I appreciate it.